Greetings everyone. This is a continuation of the uh, first video on the uh, effects of global warming on Earth and on the planets. And um, there's really a lot of factors that are going on, but again, why, does, why is this getting so much tension? Well, look at the pictures. Uh, weather's getting more severe. It's getting wetter. Oceans are rising. Some places are getting wetter. Some places are getting drier. It's just sort of making the Earth more extreme. And in fact, it turns out in the polar regions, the effects seem to be even worse. Um, here's a picture of fire fires in Alaska. So it's pretty bad stuff. But uh, before we talk about all these effects, which are fun to talk about and analyze, we need to understand the science, and that's what we're doing here. What we've covered so far is we basically talked about how the Earth is getting warmed from the sun. Sounds obvious, but uh, basically we had to cover the concept of uh, black body radiation. So let's just uh, quickly review. Uh, black body radiator is a perfect absorber. It's used to predict uh, the emitted distribution of light great triumph in physics to do that uh, and you can see that room temperature corresponds to about 300 degrees Kelvin that's sort of the temperature of the earth uh, yet the sun is much much hotter 6,000 degrees Kelvin so let's start with the greenhouse effect because that's what's purportedly heating up the earth lights coming in sit in the earth it's perfectly absorbed well what happens if the earth is a black body it's going to emit IR if the Earth is at about 300 degrees Kelvin, and we'll show later why that's the case, it will emit mainly in the infrared. In fact, the probability of a visible photon coming out is about once every uh, couple hundred years or so at that temperature. So what's happening is um, we've got this light coming out. Now let's actually put a greenhouse on top of this uh, patch of Earth. So we have infrared light. And the greenhouse is comprised of glass, so we see a little frame and, and there are glass panes in there. And basically, what's going to happen um, is uh, shown really in the next slide. We have to discuss how glass behaves with respect to how it lets light pass through it or absorbs it. So visible light clearly passes through glass, that's why you can see through glass. Yet, infrared light does not, and I show that as a little... Um, that red arrow there, of course, uh, I really can't show infrared because you couldn't see it, but uh, let's just model it as this red arrow. And obviously, uh, it can, it does not pass through glass. So what happens is it's absorbed, it's re-radiated out. In fact, this is a plot below, an approximate plot of the transmission probability versus frequency. So light in the visible frequency range is transmitted with a very high probability, almost one whereas infrared is almost zero. So what effectively happens is that a, a greenhouse is in kind of like a, a diode or something. It lets the light in, but then light that's absorbed and re-emitted can't get out because it's at too low a frequency to escape. That, in essence, results that heat coming out has got to go somewhere. Where does it go? It goes inside the greenhouse. It gets absorbed by the gases, gets absorbed by the glass. The net effect is that the inside of the house is substantially warmer. Same thing happens with cars. You may have noticed a car, your dashboard, it's very, very hot. You keep your car close. It's getting hot because of this greenhouse effect. The infrared radiation emitted from the inside of the car cannot uh, escape. Therefore, the car gets very, very hot. This is basically the greenhouse effect. Let's replace that greenhouse effect, that, that greenhouse of glass, with the atmosphere. If the atmosphere has a property where it can let visible light in, yet be opaque to infrared light, we will get the same exact effect as the greenhouse effect. And then lo and behold, that's what happens. Now, as you know, the atmosphere is comprised primarily of nitrogen and oxygen. These are nice, symmetric, diatomic molecules. Turns out that they are not good absorbers in the infrared range. So if the Earth was purely made of nitrogen and oxygen, the IR would escape back out into space. But we have some other gases. Carbon dioxide is a very good absorber, so is methane. Those were often pointed out as to be quote unquote the greenhouse gases. It also turns out that other common gases are good absorbers of IR as well. An example of that 
is the well-known water molecule, H2O, and uh, nitrous oxide. So some of these molecules that have three atoms associated with them more can have modes where they can absorb um, infrared photons. So let's talk about the infrared uh, photon and how it's absorbed by a molecule. This is an example of carbon dioxide. Imagine the carbon dioxide, it's sort of like a, it's a linear molecule. There's the two oxygens, the carbons in the middle. And when a photon at a certain frequency, there's about uh, 2200 uh, uh, inverse centimeters comes in, it can actually be absorbed. So the infrared photon is absorbed, that's energy. What happens is that energy causes the molecule to vibrate and other, other things will cause it to rotate. So eventually energy is in the molecule. Now that energy will go ahead and it will bounce around and it will hit other molecules. And the net effect is that this extra energy results in extra kinetic energy that if in fact hits all of the molecules in the atmosphere including the oxygen and nitrogen. And the net effect is when we've added more kinetic energy to the gas, the gas is moving faster. That means it's hotter. That's the basic concept. So the result is that the more of these greenhouse gases we have in the atmosphere, the more we can expect the infrared light to be converted into warmer gas. And this is basically the, the mechanism of the greenhouse effect. We have these greenhouse gases convert light. Here's a little simulation. IR photon is absorbed by a CO2 molecule. CO2 molecule collides with a nitrogen molecule, and lo and behold, that nitrogen molecule picks up energy. Here's this plot of the spectra. Of course, you can stop the video at any time. We'll talk a little bit more about this. You may ask a question, well, there's water, a lot of water in the atmosphere. If that's an absorber, why are we so worried about CO2 and methane? Ah, it's a great question. And we will address that a little bit later. But basically, here's a summary of some of the main absorption uh, peaks based on these uh, greenhouse gases. So we'll summarize now. And uh, basically, um, you now understand how the greenhouse effect works. You now understand um, sort of at an atomic scale what's going on. I'll leave it at that. Once again, thank you. Uh, my next one is I'm actually going to compute the uh, greenhouse effect on the Earth and on Venus and on Mercury because it's good to generalize this to just go besides Earth and we'll, uh, we'll visit um, some of the dependencies of temperatures and uh, radiation that's, uh, that's there that's a result of the uh, black body uh, theory. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.